Aubrey, are you quite ready to start this episode? Yeah, I'm pretty ready. I probably should have gotten like a drink of water, but yeah, I'm I'm ready. <laughs> So, guys, we have an awesome episode for you today based on a YouTube subscriber's question. Um, thank you to – where did my document go? Samira. Thank you to it. Samira. <laughs> um, Aubrey has a very cool thumbnail on there. You'll see her in the thumbnail for IELTS Energy Podcast 1209 up there on YouTube. Um, so we talk about linking verbs in that episode. And we are going to expand on some more grammar slash vocabulary today um, because of Samira's question. Aubrey, can you read that question, please? Absolutely. She said, thanks for all you do. You're welcome. And then she said, could you please clarify the difference between the adverbs quite and pretty in American and British English, please? I'm sure that's confusing for lots of English learners. Thank mm. you so much. Oh, yeah. such a good question. Yes, this is confusing. So they talked about this on an All Ears English episode as well, but we are taking a different view of these words. Yes. But if you do want to check that one out, let me give you yeah. the number. It's 1945, pretty Perfect. versus quite in English. So though it's not specific to IELTS with the examples, you could also go check that one out for interesting vocabulary and explanations. Totally. So we're going to explain the meanings and give you sentences you can use with quite and pretty on the IELTS speaking exam. And then we're also going to give you some vocabulary that is higher scoring because quite and pretty, they, these are common adverbs. We use them all the time, as you'll see, but we need you to use some higher level, more interesting vocabulary than that as well. So we're going to give you all of this today on the show. Absolutely. So let's dive into quite first and we'll share examples for both of these and higher level vocab. So this is more British English. A lot mm -hmm. of British English, English speakers will say quite where American English speakers would say pretty, which is interesting, but we do use both in, in both areas. So the first meaning is entirely. And a great sentence you might use on IELTS would be, I don't think I'm quite an expert yet, but I've been learning a lot about outdoor survival. So there it just means I'm not entirely an expert, like not quite yet. Exactly. Um, so this is the only one that cannot be synonymous with pretty, right? Um, so quite meaning entirely, like fully, wholly, all the way, totally. Those are all synonyms in this case. I'm not totally an expert yet. Um, so in this case, we cannot exchange it with pretty, right? But the next two meanings, actually and really, completely interchangeable with pretty in this case. I can say my work is quite easy in reality to mean like actually, but I could also say my work is pretty easy in reality. It's the same meaning. It's just an American might tend to say pretty, whereas a Brit might tend to say quite. But even then, I feel like that's not as true anymore, really, because yeah, I know me personally, like I use both all the time. Absolutely. Yeah, they're so synonymous. You, I mean, most English speakers are listening to podcasts and watching films and movies and, t you know, TV shows from both. So we get more and more familiar with the slang and with the mm -hmm. way each other speak. And I think it just sort of bleeds into both to where all of us use them both. Another example would be my day, my neighbor didn't like this book, but I think it's pretty great to be honest, which just means actually or quite. They're very interchangeable. Yeah, totally. Um, also, if we want to say like really, really like highlight that is really very, I could say I don't mean to brag, but I'm quite good at water polo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's just, it's synonymous with really or very, right? It's the same. Exactly. And here again, you could replace it with pretty and there's no difference in meaning. Um, and remember you're not scored on using like only British English, right? Um, as long as the English you are using is natural and correct in either American or British English, you're fine. 
Absolutely. It's interesting to think about the intonation here because pretty can also mean fairly. So mm -hmm. when we say really, like, for example, if I were to say, I've been practicing badminton every day and I'm getting pretty good if I do say so myself. If I switch the intonation, I just say, I'm getting pretty good if I do say so myself. That sort of means like fairly, like you kind of have to emphasize that pretty good, just like quite good for it to mean really. It's interesting how the intonation changes this one. That's so true. I didn't think about that because these two definitions are different, right? right. Here, here we have on the one hand, really very. So we have strong intonation. I'm quite good at water polo. Like you sound confident. So I know because of the intonation, I mean, really. However, like Aubrey said, if you sound unsure, questioning, like upward intonation, then it means kind of, right? Not really. Exactly. Kind of, which is totally different. Like, uh, it was pretty good. Like, it was okay. Different meaning. Right. Like, fairly, like, kind of, you might say. I saw a pretty good film the other day, but it didn't have the best script. And this means, like, it was kind of so so. It was not the best. Totally. Oh, that's so interesting. Right. So, let's dive into how <laughs> these help our scores. Wait, I need to explain why I'm laughing. So. Let me, uh, let us give you a little insider peek at how we record the podcast, guys. So in the middle of every recording, uh, we pause for a second in case there's like a break for like an ad or something. Um, so while we're talking, we have to pause and uh, clap to indicate the edit point, okay? Um, but this time after Aubrey clapped, Neither one of us talked. We were waiting for each other to talk and it was silent and it was really funny to me. Well, okay. and it's also going to be funny before the break. You guys are going to see this if you're on YouTube because you were still talking when I went to clap. So I'm going to be like this, <laughs> like holding my hands ready to clap, looking like a crazy person. That's okay. Hey, these are the perks you get when you watch the episode on YouTube. <laughs> guys, we, I just want to thank everyone listening because Aubrey and I have so much fun recording these episodes for you and um, connecting with you guys through these comments. So please leave us a review for the podcast. Leave us comments on YouTube because that is um, really one of the most enjoyable ways and some of the only ways we can connect with you guys. So go ahead and leave us reviews and comments. All right. Um, so let's get to the higher scoring vocabulary. Now, why do we even care about words like quite and pretty? Why do we need adverbs? Yeah, they do improve your vocabulary score. You need adverbs and adjectives in order to have interesting sounding sentences. And often this is the ha the easiest place to boost your vocabulary score because if you're learning adjectives and adverbs, they can be used in lots of different sentences. They're not so topic specific so that on you know whatever topic you get, you can throw those in to boost mm -hmm. your vocab scores. Exactly. So instead of using quite to mean entirely, like our example was, I don't think I'm quite an expert yet. It means I'm not totally an expert yet. You could actually just say entirely because that's great vocab. I'm not entirely an expert yet or absolutely. I'm not absolutely an expert yet. Okay. So those two adverbs, absolutely. You know what I just thought of that entirely. I want to add? Absolutely, what? entirely, and decidedly. Oh, that's a very, and boy. I never hear students use that one to never. say decidedly instead of entirely. Ding, ding, ding. Band nine <laughs> alert. Ding, ding. Okay. <laughs> that was so cheesy. We need an actual bell to ring. <laughs> I know. Okay. Uh, so Instead of saying actually, um, actually is a filler word. I use it all the time. Mm, I really do. Like that's one of my crutch words. Uh, but we don't want to repeat lots of words. So what can we say that is higher scoring or more impressive than saying actually? You could say indeed or as a matter of fact. You can hear how these sound a little bit more formal. So totally. part three, writing task two, these are perfect to boost those vocabulary scores. Yeah, we don't want to say actually in our writing, you right. know, way too informal. Um, but these phrases are still great to use in speaking. Even if it's like an informal less um, answer, I would use these, honestly. So mm -hmm. let's go back to the original um, example and change it. Originally, I said, my work is quite easy in reality. So that's um, an example of quite meaning like actually, right? 
So I have to change the grammar structure a little bit. And I could say, indeed, my work is easy. Or as a matter of fact, my work is easy. Nice. Um, so it still carries the meaning, but better vocabulary. Absolutely. And then for really to replace quite or pretty with the meaning of really, you could say genuinely. Oh, that's this so good. is again, I know, right? Examiners going to hear this like, ooh, yay, I can boost their vocabulary score. So let's replace this in one of those examples. I don't mean to brag, but I'm quite good at water polo. Instead, you could say I'm genuinely good at water polo. That it's sounds very, so really. smart. Mm hmm. Like, and listen to that pronunciation. It's like you can show that you're proud of using this word. You know what I mean? You're like, I am genuinely <laughs> good at water polo. I'm like, genuinely oh. impressed at my use of this amazing word. <laughs> I know. Totally. I'm genuinely in love with myself right now. Um, all right. So the last one, also great vocab, is passably. So uh, remember when we explained that there's a difference, right? In the intonation, as far as the meaning, it can mean really or fairly. So really say genuinely, really a lot. Great. Awesome. But like, uh, kind of almost fairly. Okay. Different meaning. So instead of that, we could say passably. That is an awesome word. Yes, right? So to put it in that example for Fairly, I saw a passably good film the other day, but it didn't have the best script. Oh, so much higher level than saying I saw a pretty good film. I know, right? Um, mm -hmm. I like using that as an adjec adjective too. Um, instead of saying pretty good, you'd be like, mm, it was passable. Like that, mm. that would sound great. Yes, absolutely. These are such higher level words. You guys want to be, it's good to know, you know, how do we use pretty? How do we use quite? Mm -hmm. But you actually, these are not high level. We have both heard students use these a lot. There are better options that you need to practice using so that they're very easy for you to pull into any sentence you could use them on, on test day. And test these out in the real world, guys. These are all great, fun vocabulary words that uh, people will want to hear. You know, you want people to want to listen to you. And then you can connect with them more easily because they are in this conversation. You have you hooked them because you said genuinely. And now they're like, oh, this person is fun to talk to. So write down two or three of today's phrases, guys, and use them to connect with someone in the real world. And the more often you use these words, the better you'll remember them for the test. Awesome. So fun today, guys. Thanks for joining me, Jessica. It's a good one. My pleasure. You know what? I think I'm going to do this again next week with you. Oh, let's do it. I think that sounds great. I'll see you there. Okay. Bye, everyone. See you next week. Bye.